it's a new year. It's a, it's a, it's a new year, second quarter. It's a great opportunity still to continue, not starting over, or start again. And so I'm excited about that. And I hope you are as well. It's still a new year. It's a new quarter. Okay, and this is the second day of this new quarter that offers and wins an opportunity for us to start again, not to have to start over. And so I'm excited about that. And you wonder, who is this person? This is Beth Copeland with Georgia Christian Business Network, and we are putting God back in business. Today is Take Charge Tuesday. And the newness of uh, the prayer, we just had Larissa pray us in, and she just, God just put that on my heart, you know, because some people are saying, oh, uh, the year's getting old. No, it's still a new year. It's still a new year. And it's so new today. It's the second day of a new quarter of the year. And so we've got to look at that uh, from the God's perspective and not man's perspective. And so Take Charge Tuesday is a great opportunity for you to be encouraged no different this month than last month and the years prior. We have some amazing speakers that we present on the Georgia Christian Business Network platform that can help you to grow personally and professionally. No different from today. We have today an amazing speaker. I'm so excited about Monifa and her membership with Georgia Christian Business Network, undergirding, supporting our vision, and you'll have to tell them in your intro for how many years in just a second that you've been with us and how God even connected you to this organization because you're valuable to us and we appreciate that. You're not new to us on the platform either. Every opportunity we get, there's been in-person opportunities and virtual that you've been on the platform. And so in just a second, I'm going to, well, I want to say welcome back right now, but in a second, I want to allow you this opportunity to share with us who you are, what you do, and why it's important for others to know. But I want to remind everyone that this is still yet the year of higher ground at Georgia Christian Business Network. We wholeheartedly believe that the doors have been opened this year for us to be able to go up higher in every aspect of our lives. We've given you an acronym, and I'll take an opportunity later in the show to revisit that acronym for HIRE. But right now, I will not delay a second longer for allowing you to hear directly from our awesome speaker. Monifa Graver, would you please introduce yourself to our audience and tell them just all that you want to share about who you are and also lead into where we're going today in your presentation. And I'm gonna get us live on some other platforms. Okay, thank you awesome. for joining us. Thank you. thank you, Beth, and thank you, Larissa. You know, I never, um, take opportunities like this lightly. And I'm so grateful to be on the platform to share with so many that are either listening live now or will be listening later. Um, Monifa Robinson Gruber. Um, I do a lot of uh, leadership coaching specifically with women, but I I, the thing that's unique about what I do is I use a Christ-centered approach and I work specifically in the areas of balance, clarity, and purpose. And I, I believe I found um, the Georgia Christian Business Network online and I was like, I kind of like their mission and I'm not one to join organizations, but I was led to join this one, connected with Beth and many of the team members um, that she has working with her. And it has truly been a blessing 
on so many levels, you know, of course, business wise, but also on a very personal level, just getting to know the women and, and the participants uh, that are part of the organization. I think I've been with you guys now for a few years. I don't know. Time goes by kind of quick. So it's been a few years, maybe. But um, so, like I said, I'm just grateful to to be here today. And, you know, today we're going to talk about honoring God in our health honoring God in our health. And we're going to talk about spiritual health, mental health, and physical health, you know, because it's all, we, we, it all makes a difference. It all matters. It's no sense. I won't say it's no sense, but um, you, you can reach more people and have a greater impact if you are spiritually sound mentally sound and physically sound, right? You know, if you're sick, but you're strong spiritually, that'll help you spiritually. But the impact, you know, if you laid up in the bed and can't talk because you ate too many Oreo cookies, <laughs> uh -huh. you know, that makes a difference. Or, you know, if you're stressed out, you know, there's a difference between helping people from a place of pain versus a place of purpose, right? And, it, you know, it's not that you have to be completely healed, but you don't want to still be in the in a, in, a, in a bitter place, you know, with your pain. So we want to, you know, talk about how important it is to honor God in our health, right? And like I said, uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about the spiritual, mental, and physical, I love it. I love it. And I know there's opportunity that this will uh, be, it's on the Take Charge Tuesday platform, and it aligns perfectly as well with the Wellness Wednesday opportunity. But I wanted to get you out here as quickly as possible to share this word, and it's going to so align with where we're focused on Wellness Wednesday this month as well. So I'm so excited about what God has given you in this regard, and I will take this opportunity to share the acronym because it lines beautifully with what God said. Um, higher acronym for direction only to allow God to expand upon it through our Take Charge TZ speakers and our Wellness Wednesday Fantastic Four platform and guests is heart of humility is where it's foundational, is having that foundation that is based upon a heart of humility. Because when we think of higher and we think of Psalms 1833 and how God said he'll make our feet like hinds feet and we'll be positioned where? In high places, you know. Um, the opportunity is if you really want to really experience higher ground in every aspect of your life, you've got to understand and embrace humility, a heart of humility. Humility is before honor. And God looks at the heart, whereas man looks at the outward appearance. So that's foundationally. And the eye is you've got to have a integrity that's inseparable from circumstances, situations that doesn't vary from day to day, that it doesn't be look one way in church on Sunday and another way in the workplace on Monday, but maintaining inseparable integrity that it doesn't pick and choose or vary ratios of integrity, but it is true integrity. My word is true. My word is good. What I say in the dark is what I say in the light and that it marries the integrity of God, that we walk like Jesus walked. G is, is, is gracious giver, understanding. And God had this one on my heart this week because if we don't, if we're not giving, we're not living. Mm -hmm. That's what God just told me this week. If you're not giving, you're not living. And I'll unpack that probably another day because there's a whole teaching that he did for me around that. And if you're not receiving first the gift that God has given us through his son, Jesus, what a wonderful expression over the world of Resurrection Sunday and Resurrection this past weekend. 
but then to go on to understand what you're going to talk to us about today is yeah. is the opportunity to on, honor him in our health. Hmm. It's so it's important because in essence, we are our businesses. In essence, the work that we do, we have to be able to represent him and be well. Yes. So he wants us to honor him in the help. And you're going to talk with us about more of that today. And then the final two points is exemplary execution, creating a model for execution that others can follow. And understand that relationships are before revenue. We've got to understand that if we want to experience higher high this year, these are six opportunities that we need to really focus on. And so thank you today for bringing to us what God has given to you, Monifa. Oh, thank you for having me. You know, it's so interesting because for some reason, I mean, I say some reason, but we know God always has a reason. <laughs> you know, I the the word honor has actually been on my in my spirit lately. And I was like, I need to really look this up to really get a deeper understanding of what this means. Because, you know, in reading different verse passages in the Bible, you know, we even see like in Psalms how the Bible will say God honor will honor those who honor him. You know, it's in other passages. I, I think it's in first Samuel uh, two and 30, where he talks about, um, those who honor me, I will honor, right? And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed, you know? And so I'm the type, I, I got to dig deeper. I got to dig deep. I need to research. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when I, when I really, you know, started looking more into honor, I was like, well, what does it mean for God to honor us? And what does it mean for us to honor him, right? And when huh? we honor God, what we're doing is, there's obviously a, a respect factor there, but there's the praise, there's the reverence, there's the loyalty, and most importantly, there's the obedience. That is what the word means when it talks about us honoring God. Okay. Right? And so then I said, well, what does it mean when he honors us? Because certainly he ain't trying to obey us, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so when I did a deeper dive, you know, I found that it meant that he then showers his blessings on us. He gives us recognition. He makes our name good among the people. It's like, all we got to do is just do what he says and the rest is taken care of. Even in our businesses, you know, we, we work so hard and we should, but we sometimes I think we work so hard and we think it's all in our own strength. And, and we find out, or at least I'll, I'll speak for myself. There were times in my business years ago where I, I mean, you name the networking meeting, I was there. You know, I was doing it all, but no doors were opening. And finally, I got a word and the word was, you have everything you need. You just have it in the wrong order. Oh, man. And when I put things in the right order, meaning truly, truly putting God first, not just in word, not just in some deed, but really uh, allowing God to kind of really get into my DNA, mm -hmm. then things started flowing. You know, when I, when I surrendered, that's what it was really about. When I surrendered, that's when things started happening. When you surrender, you have a deeper respect. When you surrender, you show your praise more to the most high. When you surrender, there's a level of reverence and obedience that you just want to fall into because you just want to be close to him. You want to be right in his eyesight. And as a result, he says, oh my goodness.
goodness. Oh my this goodness. is what I love. I love my child. He or she is doing what I desire for them to do. And so now uh -huh. oh, I got to shower them with some blessings. And blessings aren't just always physical, tangible. Right. There's mm. the fruits of the spirit. Right? All uh -huh. those things under the fruits of the spirit I don't even think any of them are tangibles per se <laughs> now they'll show up in tangible ways but there's a peace there's a love there's kindness there's so many there's meekness there's so many things that he gives us that this world can't give us and doesn't offer that shows up in us and through us even when we're operating in business wow wow mm -hmm. I love it and and so as we continue to talk today about honor, I want all of us to keep this these, these definitions in mind about what it means to honor God and our health. And and just the not not that we're doing things for benefits, but it just comes along. It's like American Express, you know, membership has its privileges, right? <laughs> So, you know, keep these definitions in mind as we talk about how we honor God and our health. So let's talk about the spiritual piece. First, okay. okay. Right? right. So the word talks about, I would that you would prosper even as your soul prospers. And so many of us, even in business, and, and, and I get the human side of us gets caught up in it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I got to make this, this, this money. I got to go to the speaking engagement. I got to get this outfit right. I got, I got a Zoom call I got to be on. I, <laughs> I got to, you know, talk to the accountant to the, like, you know, the customers are coming in the door. I understand that a lot of times we get caught up in the physical, tangible aspects, but True success, true wealth comes when there's uh there, there's stability and growth in our spiritual lives. That connection that comes between us and Christ, right? So just as much as we're pouring in to our businesses, right? Are we pouring in spiritually? Remember, part of honoring God in our he spiritual health, honoring, respect, praise, obedience, reverence, he tells us to pray. Are we doing more than just now I lay me down to sleep? You know, are we doing Come more on, than <laughs> come on, come on. Are we doing more than just... um? Uh, what's the prayer that the kids say when they when they about to eat? Uh, good food, uh, good meat, good Lord, let's eat. That that's not that's one of them. <laughs> okay, that's one. Yeah, we there, sing God our Father, God our Father once again. That's the way we teach our four year old to start oh, getting really? into prayer. Yeah, we that's would like good. to thank you. We would like to thank you. Oh, Amen. Oh, Amen. But then what we started doing too is because you're talking about depth is not just rehearsing the now I lay me down to sleep, but to be able to talk about to God, to establish that line of communication that says, you know, God is in, in a position and wants to bless us and to take care of us. And so to pray and to call by name those mm -hmm. that we are praying for to give thanks and give him thanks for the things he's done today to reflect over to the day with the children to mm -hmm. say with the you know with our grandkids that's the way but I know where you're going with this yeah you know because it's so important yeah are we read in our word yeah you know yeah. are we Take, I mean, you know, we 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 talk about the scripture about how he'll bring to our remembrance what needs to be known or said at the time. But if we don't put anything in, there's nothing to remember. What, what right, <laughs> right, 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 you right. You know, and so and, and I don't know. I have a question. If people yeah. really understand, because we are so focused, like you said, getting on the Zoom call. 
uh, doing the um, proposals, getting more clients? Or, do we understand the benefit and the essentiality of really practicing more spirituality? And I did say practicing because creating a habit and before yes. you can even sometimes realize the urgency and the importance of reading your scriptures, mm -hmm. um, praying. That, do you understand what I'm saying? Do, do you believe that people really, even Christians, understand how that relates to my being more successful in business? Honestly, I don't, I, I'm sure there are some that do, but yeah. I don't think a lot of people do. And I'm going to say I was one of those people that didn't really understand. That's what I'm talking about. I know what you mean because I, yeah, 20 ahead, years ago, I didn't, and I've been a Christian. I don't care. I'm going to date myself. I'm 65 years old, right? But honestly, um, and I've been putting God back in business through GP, uh, GCBN, but I started God's People Ministry like 20 some years ago, early 20s, 20, 21, 22, 23 years ago. Up until that point, you know, so that puts me, what, about 40 or so? And my saved life was more like 27, 28, something like that. All of that time, I didn't get it. And mm. I started to get it about 20 years ago in my mid 40s. The, and I don't want people to, to wait on that time to really get the urgency of because mm. you miss out. Yeah. Do, do you, you see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Oh, it makes perfect sense. And um, I look, I, I'll date myself too. I'm 51. Okay. And you baby <laughs> you. You baby you. <laughs> 50 and, where? And 51 where? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm covering up well, covering up well. No. <laughs> Um, you know, and I'll be honest and say, probably it wasn't probably till about a few years ago that I got it. And, you know, because, and I think part of it is because at least for me, I've always been such a logical person. Like, yeah, I, I believed in God, been saved, but I, you know, I've been so logical that it's like, well, God, how does this connect to the spiritual? Like, I don't understand. And because I don't understand, I didn't operate as such. And right, so right, didn't right. really, and it's not that God doesn't bless us anyway, but I mm -hmm. think there's a fullness, there's a depth, there's more that he wants to grant us. And we can only do that if we move from our human logic into the spiritual realm. Even, even God told Joshua when he was getting ready, when he took over from Moses, meditate on this word day and night so that you yes. can have good success. Yeah. Good success. And when you think about your businesses or when I think about my businesses, right? My business, good success, if God called you to it, there's a level of elevation that he wants to take us to. But in order to get to where he wants to take us to, even though he'll bless us, but in order to take us to that next height, to that higher ground, right? <laughs> you're, you're yes. Here, to take us yeah. to that higher ground, we have to be in his word. It, and we it, have it, to it, truly understand it's a spiritual thing. Like we really are just a physical body, but because we're here on earth, it's so, it seems like, because this is what we see, this is what's real to us. But the spiritual world and the spiritual realm is so much more real. That's Go ahead, it. yeah. You know, until we understand foundationally that we are spiritual beings and, you know, the natural is easy God be my witness, I can relate, even though I have an understanding, although I have knowledge, it pushes 
the natural, the 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 checklist, the things we need to do, the things that we're are uh, failing at or dropping the ball on. You know, I can tell you, I understand, I un I get it, but until we promote the spiritual as the most urgent thing that we could concentrate on and not just in uh, motion, but we really honestly believe that we won't experience what God has for us. We'll experience some wins, we'll experience some success levels, but until we really, truly, truly, honestly allow God to be king through his spiritual realm and tap into the spiritual realm where we experience the supernatural move of God in our lives, in our businesses and such. I hope mm -hmm. this makes sense because oh. it, what you're talking about is so critical to higher ground. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, uh, you referenced Joshua 1, 9, Larissa, you know, it's so urgent. And that was what... Um, Monifa was quoted, if God called you to it, there's a level of elevation he wants to take us, but we have to be in his word. And she says, so good, Monifa. It is so good. We have to be in his word. We cannot do it without it. And because you learned a scripture yesterday, doesn't mean you don't need to concentrate on another one today. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. That's right. I mean, he's, he, 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 he's already ready. Like, you know, and when we talk about higher ground, imagine building a skyscraper, but the foundation is not solid. You right, know, right. That connection, that spiritual foundation needs to be solid. Right. You know, it needs to be solid. So that's the main thing when we talk about honoring God, you know, that's, that, that's, that's really it. Everything, because the Bible talks about seek ye first the kingdom. Then right. all these things will be added. Everything you need, right. maybe even some of the things you desire, like within his will, all of those things will be added if we first things first. Exactly. First exactly. Um, mentally. Now, I know we, there's, you know, over the last several years, especially since COVID, you know, mental health initiatives have, have definitely um, been enhanced and started. And I think they're great. You know, I, I come from the mental health background, you know, so I'm all for it, you know, um, but in connection with the spiritual piece, we have to renew our minds. That's what the word says. Remember obedience. He wants to honor us. So we have right. to renew our minds. And there's so much infiltration. And uh -huh. not just, not, even if it's, we're not just talking demonic, right? Let's just talk about everyday life. We, we, we're stressed out because we got, if there's no other question that is asked, I believe in every household across the world, it's what we going to eat for dinner. What, what are we <laughs> I mean, you know, you can get stressed out trying to figure out what to cook. What, I mean, it sounds frivolous, but when you start adding things up, what to wear for that day, um, appointments you have booked, you know, if you caretaker for family members, you running your business, you do, you know, some people are running a business and working a, a traditional nine to five type job, you know, kids, husbands, you know, it, it, people are busy. Life mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. stressful, right? And there's so much coming in, you know, and if we're not careful, it'll take us out. Yes. You know, so yes. like we need to find ways to renew our minds. You know, of course, being in the word is an excellent way. You know, we doesn't get any better than that. But there might be additional tangible ways to renew our minds. You know, what about just taking some time just to be quiet in the morning? Even if, even if you know you have a busy day. And you don't have time to do something extra nice for yourself. 
maybe before you jump out the bed, keep your eyes closed while you're awake when you first wake up and just breathe and meditate mm. and just mm. prepare yourself and your mind for the next day. When you're taking a shower, instead of just taking a shower just to check off the box, Unless the house is burning down, it is not going to kill you or anybody else to take 30 seconds to just breathe while the water is hitting your body. And I feel love it. The water hit your body and just take in the steam from the shower. Just take a second. Just take a second. Like life was it? life is life in <laughs> and it's going to keep yeah. life in after we're gone. So take yeah. a moment to take care of yourselves mentally if you need a therapist you got jesus and jesus will work through therapists too you know what i mean you know <laughs> to take time to feed your mind what it needs you know you you know i love it and i think it's philippians 2 5 but it says let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. And he humbled himself and then became obedient even to the cross and the, to the point of death. And um, what did I say? Philippians uh, 2, 5, I believe it is. But the thing I'm going to check myself here. But the thing that I really think is when you think about letting this mind be in you, yeah, yeah. And I went into six, being a form of God did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself a note, taking a form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. Um, when you really think about your mindset, what do you concentrate on more is critical here. What controls your thought life? What is it that you think about related to and is God a huge part of that are you communicating with God are you talking to your big brother Jesus are you in tune and constant communication with your with the Holy Spirit is he present because he is if you're not draw him near he wants to be near he wants to be involved in every aspect of our lives we've got um the Trinity to assist us to live this life because life and a lot of people don't like to hear that said, Monifa. I saw a, I don't follow what's going on in my news feed, but occasionally God has showed me stuff and he showed me something like life be life. And I'm like, and somebody said, Oh, you shouldn't say that as a Christian or whatever. I don't know what what you know that I don't, but life it, it does be life and it, it, it <laughs> yeah, life be life and and my my one dear a dear friend, a GCBN member, a NACWE member, Carmen Caldwell. I was the first person I heard say it, and I told her about it, and we both agree. Uh, you got to go with what you know to go with, but life be life. And, and that's why God gave us life through Jesus because mm -hmm. he knew life would be life. And hmm. mm -hmm. that's the way I believe it. He I knew life would too. be life. <laughs> and he yeah. offered us an abundant life. He offered us a new life and we yeah, have yeah. to tap into it, but we're yet human. And so no, maybe that's not something that you can just focus on life, be life and no. <laughs> But Jesus overcame yes. that lot to give us an abundant life. But the truth of the matter, I think you have to realize what is transpiring in life. And that there are some days that you're going to have to recognize that, oh, my God, this is can be overwhelming. And those outlets that you're talking about for my mindset is to get into my word. Get into my scripture. Hide that word, Psalms 119. Hide the word in my heart. What? So that I sin not against him. So that that life that's life in doesn't come out in a such a manner that it's overwhelming for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's because this is what you're saying. And I love it when we talked about Joshua 1 9. In order to have the good success. It's so important that we meditate 
on the word of God. And 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 not just meditate, because can I just say this? I'll use myself. Okay, thank you, God. Sometimes with the scripture, we want to know how much we can memorize and hold on to and quote. God wants to know how much can you live? Mm. <laughs> how much can you apply to your natural loppy life and lie? Mm. Mm. And so experience the good success from the promise of God. That's good. It's not so much you how much you can quote and tell people about scripture, but how much of this can you live? How much can you give your right for the others wrong? How much can you speak the truth, but speak it in love? How much can you ha, cover love covers a multitude of sins? Huh? Mm. How much of it can you not repeat a matter? Mm. Because when you repeat a matter, it causes contention, causes issues. I mean, I'm just saying, and I'm talking to Beth Copeland too, because I told God, oh my God, much younger ago, even, I said to him, God, I can't remember scriptures like I used to. I think I'm losing it. If I thought then, wonder what I think now. But at any rate, <laughs> but he said to me, and I've heard it very clearly. I don't care that you learn and memorize to learn to memorize another scripture until you start to live the scriptures you've already memorized. And I was like, whoa, that's mm -hmm. my concern. I'm more concerned about the scriptures that you're living out. Mm -hmm. Are you blessing those that curse you? Are you praying for those that despitefully use you? But you're talking about, I want to do a 1.5 million this year. And God's saying, if you just do it my way, I can help you do 2.5. You know, you live, we, we're limiting ourselves. But we don't give reverence to the things that matters to God. Hmm. Is that true? That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I love, I love that. Yeah. And and even when you speak about the business piece, when we do things God's way mentally, even, there's a clarity and a peace that comes with that. And if you notice when you're at peace, when you have more clarity, it's then that you have more capacity mm -hmm. to receive the knowledge, the revelation. I mean, you know, even when Job, in the book of Job, he says a lot of times, you know, God speaks once, he speaks twice, but man can't perceive because we're too busy. We got too much going on. Mm -hmm. But when he lays his head down to sleep, <laughs> then mm. he can seal his instructions, right? Imagine how how many instructions God could also seal if we would just do things his way, even while we are awake. We could hear him clearer, hear him more. We ain't always got to sleep, <laughs> you know, to get a revelation. <laughs> you know, if we walk in the spirit, he'll reveal things to us as we're walking yes. before we get to the next thing. Like, it, and and he'll give us like even with your business he'll give you the seed yes what's the seed yeah seed could be the finances the seed could be the connection seed could be the creative idea you know seed 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 is just what he wants to plant in you which is usually connected to him Right. Even if all, even if you say, well, I'm just a hairstylist. No, you're not just a hairstylist. You know how many people come in that need a word mm. while they get their hair styled? <laughs> you know, powerful, powerful. Larissa says more peace and clarity equals more capacity. God mm. is not concerned about what my capabilities are. 
He's more concerned about his great ability and how I'm tapping into it. We look at capabilities. God slashes that cap off, said, take that cap off and just walk in my ability. Mm. Because my ability is so much greater than your cap abilities, you know, your capabilities, right? Yeah. And so it's a trade up, not a trade. You can, we wear too many hats. We're wearing a cap that he didn't even desire that we wear. We're looking at what am I capable of doing? No, no, trade up. Mm -hmm. Take the cap off and wear my ability. Because I want to, you can do all things through me, me through because I strengthen you. It's what thus saith the Lord, you know? And so when you're talking about this today, and I'm marveling at the goodness of the Lord, is because what he wants from us is spiritual growth. Yes. He wants us to grow stronger spiritually. The higher ground is the outcome of that spiritual growth. Is your yay, yay, and your nay, nay. I have people tell me all the time, Beth, I'm going to join the network. Beth, I'm going to sing you this. Beth, I'm going to sing you that. And God is showing me where when I don't respond to somebody's email, he was just dealing with me. I'm like, God, I'm dropping the ball. And I heard, saw Carmen, I mentioned her earlier, say, God says, you're just tired. And so mm -hmm. then that means I got to push back a little bit. I can't say sign up, but there's some catch up. Just purpose what's on your plate to do it. And sometimes people don't like that because they're so used to you saying yes. But I don't want to just say yes. I want to deliver. If I tell you I'm going to join and people jump through hoops to make it happen for you because you want a payment plan or you want this. We don't even offer that, but we fix it for you. And then you don't follow through. What is that about your integrity with God? But then you're always talking about God. Thank you. You know, uh, Jesus is Lord. Yes, he is, but he's Lord over, you know, he can take care. You're lying, though. He does, <laughs> he's not pleased with that, with me or anyone. And, and it could be a tricky thing because you have good intentions. But someone told me years ago, good intentions is paved the pathway to hell. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to go to higher ground. So I've got to change, and, and, and my daughter and I didn't speak to her today, but we were exchanging a couple of text messages. We're so sod intentionally. Structure, organization, and discipline. You've got to have it mm. to be able to go to the higher ground. And so sometimes you have to back up, uproot what's planted, and start planting some sod. I hope it's okay I'm saying this because I just want to oh, help somebody. You know. This is good. Look, this is good. This is good. This is good for me. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah. You even mentioned the piece about rest. That mm -hmm. kind of takes us into the physical piece yes. of honoring God. Right? Sometimes we can be in this rat race doing, 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 doing. You... We talk about honoring God. Part of it means to obey. You too tired to pray. Not just you. I'm saying me, anybody. Too, I'm too tired to read my, get the Bible and fall. Look, I'm just going to lay here and read the <laughs> Bible. <laughs> fall asleep before I get to the second verse, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was so tired the other day. I was listening to a sermon on YouTube and I woke up in the middle of the night. I was like, I don't even know what the man said and the sermon is <laughs> over. And I, I don't need, I got to listen to the sermon from the beginning. I'm so <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have to take care of our body. And I understand I, firsthand how hard it is. We wear all these hats. Like you said, we're obligated as, you know, mother, father, sister, brother, cousin, uncle, you know, mommy, you know, daughters, you know, sibling. We're, we're obligated under a lot of these hats, these categories to fulfill certain obligations, obligations and that we place on ourselves, expectations and expectations that others have placed on us, right? We run yes. ourselves into the ground, 
you know, like you said, instead of doing things God's way, his way might be, you know, you keep running to all these networking meetings, Monifa. If you just sit down and have a conversation with the store clerk on the corner, she got something for you. You think you're going in there for a bag of chips. She got something for you, right? <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> so... Physically, we have to take care of ourselves. And no, I don't eat perfectly, but I mean, am I a glutton seven days a week for every single yeah. meal? I need yeah. to protect myself if I am, you know, Girl. you know, yeah. am I, you know, people have a lot of medical concerns and they can't move like they want to. Right. And yeah. that's fine. But if you can move, are you at least trying to do a leg lift while you eating that Oreo cookie and laying in the bed? What, I mean, what are we doing? You know, like, you know, we have to be, yeah. we talk about being fit for the kingdom, wanting to do God's work as wonderful as technology is and as needed as it is. And it works well. I, I love it. I also love to be engaged one-on-one -on -one with people. Yeah. And there's something about being able to connect and being able to smile and sit in the room and, and be able to just, just walk in a room. You know, he gives us the abilities to do things just to be with people. So are we yeah. abusing our things? You yeah. know, we want God to bless our business, but like you said earlier, Beth, we are our business. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you have employees, like we are our business. And yeah. so how, how do we show up? How, we are our brand. How are we showing yeah. up? Yeah. If we, how are we showing our employees or coworkers how to work when we run our fingers to the bone and still work, 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 and then turn around and expect them to work, work, work. And then they're scared to tell you that they have a family emergency and can't work today because all they think they're going to get fired because they're not working. Like, right. come on, it has to be balanced. God yeah. is about balance and balance doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, we just sprinkle him in. No, we mm. got to put things in That's order. Good. When I talk about balance, a lot of times I use the example of a cake. If you're just making a regular, you know, pound cake, maybe, you know, sour cream pound cake or something, yeah, you might have, you know, two cups of um, sugar, you know, two cups of flour, but imagine putting two cups of eggs, two cups of salt, mm. two cups of cream, two cups of baking soda. That's not going to be very tasty. Uh -uh. But a balanced cake will give mm. you two cups of flour, two cups of sugar, pinch of salt, quarter of a table quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda two eggs you know nothing nothing there is all equal not you know it's not all the same amount right of each uh -uh. ingredient but the uh -huh. right amount of the right things makes a beautiful cake amen exactly come and on now God is saying. you're on something put the right yeah. amount of, put, first of all i need I'm the cake, he's saying. I'm the cake, you know. I am, I'm in everything. I'm in the eggs, I'm in the flour, I'm in the sugar. So you need to have me in everything, right? Yeah. But yeah. then listen to me. Yes. Follow my instructions. Yes. And you'll mm. find out, man, do I need to go to all three networking meetings today? Mm. Lord, Holy Spirit, speak to me, guide me, lead me. Where would you have me to go? Go to the 12 o'clock one. Don't worry about the nine and the five. Wow. Excellent. 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 You know, what we have to understand is something, and I love over on the Facebook side of the house, lots of activity over there. Jerome Wilson, thank you for your awesome comments. But this one, he's kind of sums up what you just said. A false balance is an abomination, but a just weight is his delight. 
And yes. God takes great pleasure when we walk balance. You know, we want to do everything the world says to do. You're a coach. I'm a coach. There's opportunities, even Larissa over here on the Zoom side where you coach those people that are the gift center leadership that puts you in a form of coaching as a teacher, instruction, facilitator. What I'm seeing is I love coaches and I love what they bring to the table. But everybody that says you have to have a funnel, you have to email this many times, you have to do your post immediately following. They don't tell me what to do. If, if God says for me to be able to spend time with my family and I didn't get my Easter post out, I still haven't. In fact, we forgot to take pictures. We took one or two or three here and there but we had already undressed and relaxed at the table before a picture came up. Mm -hmm. I think when you're following God's leading, yes, enjoying the time that was important uh, for the priority that he has placed before you, that he can take up the time. I, you know, what we do is who's ruling you? Mm -hmm. Who are you following? You, you, you follow the post uh, plan, but are you following God's plan? He yeah. said, you should pray, med meditate in my word day and night, but, but, but you may not do that. You may forego that, but you're going to get that post in, you yeah. know, are you going to get, because that's what the S expert says that needs to happen. And if you're going to, experience great success what we have to understand is that the post that you need to get in is on your needs come post on post that come on you know uh post a word of truth that you know father cover my family and thank god for this family being together you know we missed jess this year but, you know, she said her presence, it was in the middle of the table, a beautiful centerpiece. But what I'm saying is what was important was what is, was important to God. Yes. We make all these other things of the essence. You know, God says, I can redeem the time. Yes. You know, and if we, uh, it, who are you listening in, listening to? Who has your ear? Mm. Who do you promote as the boys, yeah, post up in the closet, Jerome, post up in the closet. Do that first. I, I, I don't worry about missing posts. If it's for me and I'm taking care of something that God has placed before mm. doing whatever, that's what's before me is his. Then I learned to release because I used to be pressured, you know, and sometimes I think it's important to get out there right away and do a post, but don't let it take precedent or priority over what God has called for you to do. Make that your priority. He'll redeem the time for anything else. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Mm. And, and, and I believe that as children of God, even if we miss the mark, yeah, right? come on, he's so gracious, he's so kind. Yeah, like, oh, let me get on. The, let's come on back. This is the way I want you to go, right? Or he'll say, "Don't worry about it because we're gonna use it for your good and my glory." Right. So either way, girl, I felt like Flip Wilson when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> girl, so that's some way, good stuff if we're right there. Of the most high. Yes, God. And we are doing our best to honor him. Yeah. He has no other choice but to honor his word and honor us. That doesn't mean we're perfect. That's mm -hmm. right. It doesn't mean that we're going to always get it right. But what it means is God looks at back at the beginning, that heart of humility. Mm -hmm. God, I'm trying. God, I need you. And he wants us to need him. Not that I've got it all together and I'm dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Sometimes we're going to miss him. 
That's because we're still here on this earth and we're still in the natural, even though we're spiritual beings. But because we're allowed and we're conscious and we give voice to his Holy Spirit, he can nod us. He can probably, we are like sheep. Yes. We're the sheep of his, she you know, he's a shepherd, but we're the sheep. And sometimes sheep need a little pride in here and there, you know? And I want to always be open to that prodded because I do want to experience that good success. But if we turn a deaf ear to the prodded, if we're not focused on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical that, that Monifa is talking about, that's sharing with us today, we're going to have a tendency to get off track. And it's going to be harder to steer back on track. But what I want to encourage you today is that you still can do it. You still can do it. How do you eat that elephant? One bite at a time. And don't stay off track. You talked about the cake and the ingredients. My daughter in love, Bianca, made a her first cake. You know, because I've been doing all this stuff and they're taking it over and they're doing some great things. It was absolutely delicious. Okay. And so when we were divvying up food, they were leaving home. You know, I got three slices of cake, you know, because moderation. If I left more cake here, I'd eat more cake. So sometimes you have to be careful, okay, to not allow just because it was so good and it was so great to come beyond the time that it was planned to mm. be good for you. That's so good. Somebody's going to get that later on. It was good for me for that period. Mm. But just because it was good for me, like you said earlier, Monifa, I don't need that cake every day. It was absolutely delicious. I can't even tell you. I had it with some bluebell ice cream, okay? And I'm getting back to where I need to be because this A1C is trying to creep up. So wisdom for me, practice wisdom. And all they get and get understanding. But but what wisdom, what was principle? Wisdom mm. is the principal thing. Mm. We just we want to get good understanding, but he said use wisdom first. Girl, this is good. We got to close. We started a few minutes late, so we went over just a little bit today. I want you to be thinking about something powerful that out of all you said, or even something you've held back for us to to end on a good note in just a second but I need to do a little bit of housekeeping you know I like what Larissa said as I go into housekeeping she said so good Miss Beth we must not overstay a season is what I'm hearing and what you said putting that articulating what I just said I didn't say that you said that but but that's what God said and it resonates with my spirit that's exactly what I was hoping to say and to communicate is don't overstay the season. God will allow you that time of peace. But when he starts to prod and said, okay, let's get with it. Don't turn back. Don't turn back. This has been wonderful. I'm so excited that we're going to talk about prayer and how important it is for experiencing uh, success. Putting God back in in business through prayer is what Wellness Wednesday is going to pick up on tomorrow. And I believe it's going to align so good with what we talk. It's going to align greatly with some of the things that we've spoken about today, I believe. So I'm excited about that with the Fantastic Four are back. So join us tomorrow at Wellness Wednesday at noon on our Zoom channel. If you can't join us on Zoom, which we'd love to have you over here. And thank you for being here with us today, Larissa. But then join us on the Facebook side of the house and become engaged. And if you're on the Facebook side of the house, please share this um, communications, this podcast on your page. And so your network will be able to experience. OK, so next week on Take Charge Tuesday is Toby Carvana. I can't wait to meet with her. I love some Toby. She's going to talk about breathe, I'm sure, in some form. She's going to talk about, I'll tell you in particular, she's going to say, catch your breath, going deeper to go higher. This Saturday, this Saturday, members of Georgia Christian Business Network, soon to be Global Christian Business Network, it is so important 
that we hear from you in the way of registration for today or tomorrow, because that's going to determine whether we do a virtual or in person. If you're able to attend, I need you to go ahead and register. It's totally free for our members. But Ursel Charles is going to facilitate our session on this Saturday. And it is going to be powerful. He is the VP of Global Training and Development for Dale Carnegie. This is a member's benefit for GCBM members. The opportunity is that you show up to glean from this amazingly powerful speaker. You know, GCBN is familiar with Ursel Charles, and we're privileged to have him. So members, I know it's spring break, and you know I'm praying about do we reschedule, but I need to know as soon as possible, today, tomorrow, at the very latest, because we want to value his time that he's given to us as GCBN to spend time with us, okay, and helping us to go higher through God, through godly principles that and he's got an announcement to make that is going to be so powerful. In addition to that, if you're not a member of Georgia Christian Business Network, you can still attend. That's a small fee for your participation, but you need to go ahead and get registered either today or tomorrow. And God Golfing Girls registration early bird is open. Yes, if you are a GCBM member or not, we member National Association of Christian Women Entrepreneurs, it's the early bird period. We want to get you registered. You know we work with you. I know the event fight free fees are high, but you know us and you know how we do it. So reach out to us. And also uh, there are payment opportunities as well. But you know, if you know, you know. You can reach out to you. You have not because you ask not. And that's the extent of what I'm going to say right there. I want to thank those for joining us over on the Facebook side of the house today. We appreciate your being there and sharing this broadcast. Listen, visit our website, gcbnetwork.com. We're focused, determined, and intentional to put God back in business. And we need your help as a sponsor or a member. While you're out there looking for the next opportunity to sign up for on our uh, calendar, join our network. If you're already a member, look for opportunities how you can become more involved. Thank you so much for joining us. Monifa, what a beautiful, beautiful presentation. Thank you so very much. Thank you for awesome. having me. Thank you awesome. for having me. Just, What are those words of wisdom we can grow on? Uh, I mean, we're going to keep it simple. Stay focused. Stay obedient. Honor God in your spiritual, mental, and physical health. And last but not least, take care of God's business and he'll take care of yours. Girl, that is my sin. And I know <laughs> God gave that to you. I say, God, I'm taking care of your business. I need you to take care of mine. <laughs> and on that note, we bid you goodbye. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Be in contact with me, Monifa, about what we discussed. God bless you all. Thanks, Silverissa. Love you. Love, Love you guys. Bye-bye. See you all. Bye-bye now.